Today, I'm going to try and make a whiskey stand. That's quickly a welcome to the video. Last year, in my Christmas present video, I made a floating wine stand, and it was really cool. But I don't drink wine, I drink whiskey, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do, there's a lot of my friends that do, so I wanted to make something a little bit different this time. I've got a few ideas, but I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out, so as usual, I'm just going to make this stuff up as I go along, so let's get into it. I started with this big, horrible chunk of wood which was cut out of my house, so it's well over 100 years old, and I wanted to see if I could turn this old hunk of horrible wood into a really nice looking whiskey stand. So first I need to take out the ancient nails and try and make it look pretty. Next is a drilling the holes. Now I want to mount my bottles like this, which means drilling big holes at an angle. It's not gonna fit underneath my dodgy drill press. So I've gotta make a jig, but I don't know if that's gonna work. And I don't wanna ruin this piece of wood. So I'm gonna have to make another piece of wood to test this out on. But if it works, I get two whiskey stands. I might have gone overboard on the clamps. This one's a bit fatter than my original piece and it wouldn't go through my tiny mitre saw, so I had to go manual. I'm saving the angled offcuts and you can probably see why in the background. I started with a small offcut to try and make a jig for drilling the holes. But I messed it up because it was way too far from the wood. My second attempt was too big for the drill bit to get through. So I made a smaller one out of two angled pieces of wood. To drill these holes, I should have used a forced and a drill bit, but it wasn't working in my makeshift jig. So I'm drilling as much of the excess away with a small drill bit and then just ripping it out. Once the hole was deep enough, the forced and bit did work to clear out the rest of it. This is the most horrible hole I have ever drilled. But we're getting somewhere. Boom. Let me just fill this bottle up and test it. I think I have drilled this one too low, so I don't know if I'm gonna get three other bottles in. But yeah, let's get to it and see what happens. I really don't like the way the bottles are sitting on this one, so I'm gonna flip it over and see if we can get a better space in. Boom, stands up on its own. Check it out. Okay, so the holes aren't completely straight. When you look from the top, all the bottles are actually slightly skewered. Measuring and lining the holes up, I made a huge error. In my head, I was thinking I was just cutting circles because I had a circular drill bit. But when you're cutting at an angle, you're actually drilling an oval. And that's why the top hole got very close to the very end of the piece of wood. And then on this bottom hole, it was actually supposed to go within these two lines. The bottom line ended up being dead center. So when I did the middle one, I made a couple of measurements and it still didn't quite work out right, but I am as close as I need to be, I think. The only problem I've got now is my drill has exploded. That does mean to make this free present, I'm gonna have to go buy another drill. <laughs> Sake. Ah. In the meantime, I bought a new toy. I've got some sanding circle tube bit thingies. This costs about 12 pound on Amazon. 
I'm gonna sand out the holes and see if I can straighten them slightly. This was supposed to be a three bottle floating whiskey stand, and it is. You saw it standing up on its own earlier, but it's a really big piece of wood to be hanging around your house if you've got no whiskey bottles in it. So I'm gonna add the offcut from earlier to the back of it so it stands up on its own and looks like an interesting piece even if there isn't any bottles in it. But first, I'm gonna add an angle to all the edges because that's what the proper YouTubers do. This is a pretty beefy piece of wood and now I need to attach these two pieces and I don't think just gluing it is going to cut it. So I'm going to have a go at using dowel, which I'm not very good at at all. So I've had an idea for a jig. Okay, so this piece needs to go on there like that, uh, which means obviously we're going around here. We need to avoid this hole. So this piece of wood here, let's stick that right at the end. Probably got a hole there, so we'll use that. And then maybe one up there as well. Now, if this works, there's one really important thing that we need to show which way up it is. It was a millimeter out, but we can fix that with a sander. That's good enough for me. That one dowel is enough to hold it on securely. So that should be pretty tough once it's all glued up. I haven't flamed anything in a while, so let's see what it looks like after some fire. Just realised that I'm going to have to take it apart to get the back sections because the flames don't get in there. Now that the test one's done, and I kind of know what I'm doing, it's time to finish the original one. But after doing the test one, I'm thinking that this one is actually a bit too thin which is really frustrating. So I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker and I'm gonna use this old piece of wooden wall from my house. Normally I would have clamped that and glued it properly, left it overnight, but I don't have time to do that because Christmas is in three days. So I've had to go out and buy a new drill, it's the cheapest one I could find. I also decided to treat myself to a new hole bit whilst I was there to make things faster, smoother, I don't know. <laughs> The new hole bit was amazing, but the attachment it sits on was too wide and stopped it going down as far as it needed to. So I finished it off with a flat bit. Even though the flamed one did look cool, on this one I'm going to try something different, something new, something I've wanted to try for a while, and something I think my friend is going to appreciate when he receives this gift. We're going full-blown goth on this project, it's going to be black. But first I'm going to spray with water to raise up the wood fibres, so that doesn't happen when I apply the stain. I don't know, I'm making this up as I go along.
And there we go, two whiskey stands are made out of scrap wood. Now, you could use pallet wood for this, because I use pallet wood in a lot of my videos, and I wish I thought of that at the start. But yeah, any big pieces of wood that stack up to that size will work perfectly. The test one actually turned out amazing, so I got to give that away as a gift. You could see one of the holes that I'd messed up slightly from the back, but it's hidden, you, you don't notice it. And I wish that I had more wood so that I could have made the grain on the little stand piece at the back go in the same direction as the main piece. But apart from that, it was awesome. Now, I was filming this project before Christmas, so I ran out of time and couldn't show you the staining process. I gave it four coats of that black stain. Once I finished, it was this super flat black. So I gave it a coat of satin and just sanded it a little bit to give it a tiny bit of a shine. When I did give it a slight sand, some of the black did fade away a little bit, especially around the screw holes where I put it all together. And originally I chose the surface that had all the nails in because there was a metal stain around the holes and I thought that was gonna be cool. But that little bit of sanding and the original nail holes that were in the wood made the piece end up looking rugged. Like it looks like it's ancient and it was spoke. It almost looks burnt in some areas. It's, it's interesting. It definitely didn't turn out how I expected, but it was still cool. Whilst making those two, I was coming up with all sorts of ideas of how to improve them. So there definitely will be another Whiskey Stand video in the future because I, I need to build one for myself now. If you do follow the channel, you're probably wondering why I'm filming in this direction. And that's because I'm currently rebuilding my workshop. Now you guys have been giving me quite a few tips and suggestions recently. So if you've got any ideas for the workshop rebuild, drop them in the comments below. It will help me in this entire process. If you've made it this far, thanks very much for watching. It would be awesome if you could subscribe. But as usual, if you've got any tips, questions or suggestions, stick them in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Peace.